warning. This podcast is not for the faint of heart. We keep it real and raw and talk about issues that other podcasts wouldn't dare. This is the Truth of the Matter podcast with Dr. Spencer. Step into our world. What do you do if you fall in love with one of your kid's friends who's over 18? How do you handle getting caught in bed with your boss? Why do girls like bad boys? Are you burned out from an unbalanced career in personal life? Are you still working while your kids are telling you how their days went? Our passion is to help people in relationships Anyone you have a connection with in life. Neighbors, co-workers, family, spouse, kids, yourself, and helping you achieve the work-life balance. Let's have some fun and let's get educated. This is the Truth of the Matter podcast. And now your host, Dr. Lamar Renee Spencer. Well, hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to the Truth of the Matter podcast with Dr. Spencer. And I have a special guest on with me today, Mr. Thomas Sanders Cordan. And he is a delight. So we're going to get right into it. But before we do, please be sure to like, subscribe, and share. Follow us so you'll know exactly when new episodes are um, released. It would, you know, it's just, it's going to be some cool um, stories that's going to be coming out. So anyway, Thomas responded um, to a question that I asked, which was basically choosing between family and career. So I'm going to let him kind of detail that a little bit. And, you know, we're just going to follow along and have a great dialogue. So Thomas, thank you so very much for joining. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Lamar, it's a delight to be here. Kind of excited to talk about my favorite subject in the whole world, which is my son. Yes, absolutely. So tell us um, how or the situation where you actually had to sort of choose between your career and your son. And we know what that is. So can you give us a little background about um, how that started and, you know, where we are? Sure. The it it was a it was a staged process. Um, his mother, when we got together, she started a new direction in her career, and that was a constant path of elevation. The sideline to that was I was coming out of several businesses, one I'd had for fifteen years and had collapsed due to the world economy. So I'd already been through a lot of pain in the world of finance and and basic uh, self self catastrophe not entirely all my own making but it it gave me the ability to make some very clear decisions because some had already been made for me painfully um his mother was when when he was born she was the primary income i was secondary income the love and the captivation of that child my son is still the same if not greater six years in so the decision making process really is is never that difficult as long as i'm present there are times when he's challenging and there are times when i get distracted because i'm all wrapped up in in a project or in in something that i'm really really focused on um but that that actually is a, a genetic disposition now because he gets very focused and very, very driven on his topics of attention. So it's quite amusing to be trying to course correct him, knowing full well that I have had a strong hand in that happening in him and his personality. His mother is quite driven as well. So we have got a, a, a dynamo of a, of a six-year-old. I was amazed. Wow, it sounds like it. And you know, it's. I um actually did a piece not too long ago about when you're driving. Most of the time, your kids tend to emulate your drive, and they become driven too. 
I do know that sometimes it's difficult to say, wait a minute, slow down. You know, it's great to be driven, but at least be a kid too and enjoy those, your childhood years. You know, sometimes they kind of go into overdrive because they see us, we're really in overdrive, right? And I, I like for me, I just want my daughter to work hard, be driven, but enjoy these years because they're precious. And really, we know you're not going to get this again. You know, it's just like a one and done type of thing. And I never want her to look back and say, you know what? I have regrets that I never had to really enjoy childhood. So I completely understand. So did you, so when you got to that point where you, like you said, he's driven, that you say, you know what, let me kind of take a step back or pause or um, whatever to say, you know what, let me focus really more on him or how, or change our focus. It was, it, it's, it's not a single, and we did touch on this before, it is not a single event. It's a daily event. And it, I couldn't tell you that there was ever a turning point because the turning point assumes I was ever going in a different direction perpetually. I'm, I know there's been times because I do, I am, and this is non-judgmental, um, it's simply an observation as opposed to a measurement, but the reality is we all do it. We all stray from our ideal. Uh, you may well with your daughter at times forget that you need to make sure she's in play or or fun mode as opposed to learning or growth mode um so it's it's more about me being on the page all of the time it's not about today i must wake up and remember that i've got to be the best dad i can be that's a default setting the but the balance of that is that you also have to to be the best dad you can be it, it i i always use the analogy and i'm i'm sure i picked it up from joe dispenza but it's it's basically your never going to be able to give of yourself if your glass is almost empty. Mm -hmm. So if you're incomplete or if your energy's low or if your sleep's wrong or if your work-life balance, your stress factors in work are not clearly defined and that you manage them, you won't be giving your best in and to your child. So the, the constant is to remind yourself of that. And, and that requires a, a healthy self-talk. It requires some very, very clear parameters. So your non-negotiables, one of the things I've grown in my repertoire is my non-negotiables. Mm -hmm. And these things now make decision-making a lot easier because it's a non-negotiable. And I didn't have that before. I was, I was very, very fluid. I'd been single, uh, well, single is the wrong word. I'd been unmarried for for decades i'd run businesses all my life and the business always came first and then there was me and then there was the relationship and sometimes me and the relationship were parallel and that was healthy and good and sometimes it was unhealthy because the business came first and i might be traveling or or working to pressures but all of that has come late my maturity like many men i fear my maturity's come late but it's come late thanks to my son but the non-negotiables, I would, I would say to anyone, if you get your non-negotiables crystal clear, the decision-making process about being a good parent, about being a good human, and about captivating everything that you want from each and every day becomes a lot easier. I'm not saying it's simple, but it, that binary process of, no, it's a non-negotiable. Off you go. I'm not involved. You've now touched on my non-negotiable. I'm not, I'm not here for you. That then gives everything flow. Mm -hmm. Well, how do you come up with your non-negotiables? I think that's a great um, assessment. How do you come up with that? Because, you know, depending on your career, um, if you don't participate, then you're not considered a team player. Or you're saying, you know what, I need to work at this job. I know it's challenging. I know I'm going to have less time for my family, but I need to keep my lights on. How do you come up with what is considered non-negotiable and i'm 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 almost the antithesis of this previously but i've got a lot more structure in my life so now there is a daily meditation process there's a daily self-care process and all of those build you it's not one 
in, in answer to your question, it's no one thing because you will have to compromise. But that, that's the beauty of the non-negotiable. So, and also there's some structure to my life which makes it a little bit easier because I'm, I'm a, a separated parent. So we're two solo parents in two separate environments, but we co-parent our son, which means that when I'm with him, everything else is secondary because that I've, I've only got that allotted time. And it, if anything, I would recommend that for all parents. I see some parents in his my son's social circle and they do work a very, very healthy tag team situation. So for if one parent is, for want of a better phrase, on duty or on call, the other parent can and often will be doing anything else, whether that's self-care, work, anything away from the children to be an adult. Because the other problem is we're parents, but we're also adults and humans within and of ourselves. So again, to build that non-negotiable profile, you have to work out what is negotiable. So you, the answer to your question is it's layers. You build your non-negotiables in layers, but you also have to be accepting of the fact that sometimes there's going to be a pain because you'll have to break a non-negotiable. And I'm not talking about picking up a gun and robbing a bank. I'm, I'm talking about non-negotiables that it's practical to take a view on someone may be visiting from another office you may be in line for a promotion a big a big contract has to be completed these are things that like you say they keep the lights on they may well keep you in a job they may well promote you within that job if you take the the bigger picture and then and then sadly you you will have to take a view on your non-negotiables no, that, that completely makes sense. And, you know, you touched on something, too, about structure, right? And you're absolutely right. I know for me in my program, I'm always stressing people to have structure, um, time management skills, all of these skills, right? And I have to say that there's times where I falter. I miss it, you know? I, I say, well, you know, I'm going to just take maybe a couple hours to do a task. And next thing you know, it goes into four hours or five hours. So you're right. You got to have that structure. You got to know, for me, would work. I had to know when to say enough is enough, at least for today. Yeah. It will be there tomorrow. And it's okay that it'll be there tomorrow. And don't feel compelled to always justify things and learn to say no. You can say it professionally, respectfully. I can't do it. Maybe another time, but I just can't do it today. And sometimes that no, I mean, the no is tremendously empowering. Sometimes you have to quantify it and sometimes you don't. I, I try very hard not to quantify or justify. I just say, can't do that. It's it's not it's not within my bandwidth. Um, if people are really, really, really hacked off with me then i will i will give them my parameters um but you picked up on something else and, and it's another thing I've, I've i've come to terms with recently you have to be able to forgive yourself when you falter and it's it's the thing that separates us we look at the the elon musks and they're they're held to a very high standard but there are many people out there the the, the super fund managers the super high performers in many many areas in life predominantly they are less emotionally engaged they are far more structured in an almost automaton profile so where we are feeling people otherwise we wouldn't be here we wouldn't be talking about parenting and about these choices that we make to make us better parents and to go through the the struggles that come with that that role um then we, we also have to accept that we're going to falter. And, and that is, all that is, is a break. It's not the end of the empire. It's not the day that you failed as a parent and never came back. Similarly, recently, I, I, and it's happened now around me, five or six different people completely disconnected on different continents. They're all struggling with their energy in the last three or four or five days. Now, as it happens, we have a full moon. We have a couple of things changing that they've identified. I've just simply identified, you know what? There's some low energy at the moment because we are cyclical creatures. And it's 
it's gone out of vogue. But I do remember that our circadian rhythm, circadian rhythm was a huge thing that that was a great influencer in understanding our cycles. That whether you want to measure it, map it and have your charts on your wall or whether you want to simply accept, you know what, today I'm on a low energy day. I'm, I'm not at my best. And then pick and choose the tasks that you can manage without hanging yourself up on the one thing you failed. Because tomorrow's fresh. No one's touched tomorrow. You're going to dive into it. It's going to be beautiful and yours. Do what you want with it. You can go in smiling and own it, or you can go in crying and pissing and moaning about yesterday. Right. You're absolutely right. And, you know, you touched on something about being like putting your emotions in things. And that's true. A lot of times for me, I put so much emotion in it that I either talk myself into it, do way more than what's expected. I actually get on my own nerve and come to find <laughs> out if I don't do it that day, it's okay. It's not a big deal. It's not the end of the world. I just put more expectations and physical illness on myself than yep. it's actually worth. You know, and that to me has been something that I've been working on. Like, it's okay if it doesn't get done today. Take your emotions out of it. Yeah. You know? or, or, or just what I found, uh, the big turning point for me was my self-talk. Uh, the, the guy that was chatting inside my head, if I ever met him, I'd probably end up being hung for murder because he, <laughs> the way he spoke to me was just vile. But we've sacked him. He's been parked and we have a different commentator and a different vocabulary. Um, and it and it does stop a lot of those things where you just you you just take a stumble or you take a pause and next thing you know you've got the little evil voice chirping in your head telling you that you mustn't no you must do more and you must go on and you know that thing that that gets you uh, um, as you say um, emotionally tortured you you yes. can stop it with that chat. Yes, you're right. Well, uh, you know I like how you said that, but because I, I always say the people in my mind are coming to the round table and they're not agreeing. But then that one person is like, no, we got to get this done today. So yeah, I'm like, the people in my mind are coming to the round table, you know, and yeah. that's one person is the boss. And they're like, no, you got to get it done today. And it doesn't matter if I'm like deathly exhausted. They're like, nope, more and more and more. And even for me, I keep moving the, I call it the yardstick. It's like, if I feel like I'm not going to accomplish something, then I go a little bit more the next day and a little bit more, then a little bit more. And then to me, it's like, I am so at that point, forget physically drained. I am mentally drained. Yeah. And I thought at one time, I was like, am I attracted to stress? <laughs> you know, it sounds so silly, right? I thought I really was attracted to stress because to me, it's almost like it's an adrenaline rush. It's like the more I, you know, the more I can complete, the more I want. And yeah. then I'm like drained. And I'm like, why? Because when you do so much, after a while, your brain stops working. And then that's where like things happen. What do you think about that? Well, it, it there, there's a balance in there, um, and I've I've been exactly where you've been, and and I, I'm, to the point where I put myself in hospital, and they didn't know what it was for a couple of days, and it it was very very traumatic. Um, but again, it, it comes back to this this self chat, and and believe me, I don't you know I really don't have a, a healthy Buddhist sitting in a cave chanting meditating constantly and helping me through all of this i've still got a, a shitty voice that i now filter down and turn the volume down and change the vocabulary but it's still there and it still pushes and drags and kicks and screams mm -hmm. you, you as as i hear so i'm i'm six decades into this life and i i now recognize that it is without a doubt a marathon so all this stuff I was doing when I was young, all this sprinting and charging and bullying my way through life and getting everything done and hitting all these targets and, and pushing myself to the point where you literally, you'd, you'd make yourself ill. 
you've heard umpteen times you've heard of people that have flu just before they go on holiday. They get really ill whilst they're on holiday. They come back from holiday, they're ill. Why? Because they've done what you just said. They've, they've charged their way through push, push, yes. push, push. Yes, yes, absolutely. Absolutely. But, but this is a cycle to break. It really is because our skills, our kindness to ourselves, our deliverabilities on, on what we offer and what we, what we provide to people around us, those things, they need to be constant. You need that glass at least half full to dip into it, to offer it around. So when you're at your round table, everyone has something to eat. Everyone has something to drink. Yeah. But if you're smashing yourself and your energy's low and you've, you've run out of time on the clock, there's, there's nothing for anyone and everyone goes short. Everyone misses out. So there's a kindness you need to find with your energy, with your time, with your deliverability. And guess what? That comes back to being a parent. That comes back to being with your child. Because the more, the more that you're healthy there, sorry, my screen is just jumping around on something peculiar. There we go. Yes, get back. Um, so the, the, the more that you can get that right, the more you bring it into your parenting relationship, into your parenting skills. Alternatively, maybe what I've done is I've learned all that from being around my son. Mm -hmm. I'm really, really being driven to be all that I can be for him. That has helped me to be better in every other area, apart from possibly my relationships, because the divorce is the divorce, that's done. Um, but it, I'm not sure what the phraseology is, but I don't want to say it was a failure because we did have a wonderful time frame together. We did create our son together and he is a lovely human. It's just heartbreaking that the, the marriage and relationship around him is now the way it is. It's two separate people. But again, you can beat yourself up. You can, you can have that harsh, harsh conversation. Or you can go with the flow and, and work, it, work it in a way that's best for all three of us. You're right. You're absolutely right. And that for me, it's, it's a challenge, you know, because when I learned even as a um, co-parenting single parent is that um, you have to be more flexible and you have to communicate. Right. That is really essential is the communication part. You say, you know what? I need help today. And that's always been a challenge for me is asking for help. You well, know? sometimes getting it's a challenge as well. Let me tell you, when you ask, it's not always the, particularly when you're asking your, your former partner, um, there is always that, that membrane there that it's very hard to pass through. So it's, it's a good thing that you do ask, but I'm sure there are frustrations there on both sides because that 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 membrane in that relationship will always be there and not everything passes through easily no you're absolutely right it sounds easier said than done absolutely oh, yeah. and there's times i'm like you know what i don't even want to bother i'm not nope. even gonna ask. i'm not even gonna say anything i'm just gonna figure it out yeah. and i'm just gonna have to work it it's just gonna have to work itself out and i tell my daughter all the time i said you know sometimes I'm not going to get it right. We're just in this whole thing, this whole thing called life. And we're yeah. just going to figure it out together. And it's okay. We don't always get it right. It is okay. You know? What, how old's your daughter? She's 14. Okay. So you've, you've, you've got a great, you, you've got a great age for dialogue. My, yeah. my six year old, I, well, I have two problems. There's a couple of times that I can remember that I've, I've slipped up. And I've gone back to him, but unfortunately, I didn't have him the next day. So I've gone back to him and I've had to apologize. I felt I had to apologize. He knew nothing about it. But I, I just took him in my arms and I said, listen, I, I did this. It was just I was frustrated or something was going on or I couldn't get there in time. You know, those things that were that, that are genuinely out of your control and you feel let down. You feel that you've done something wrong. I, I just apologize to him. I mean, I'm lucky. I can literally count. It's on my thumbs at the moment, the number of times I've had to apologize that I felt I had. He at no point went, yeah, dad, where's my apology, buddy? But they, I think that also works. I think it's great that you can, you know, you can definitely represent yourself to your daughter 
as a, a normal human, not a superhuman. Because yeah. when you stop being a superhuman, my gosh, then the you know the the the, the sun gets blacked out and and everything goes dark and terrible because suddenly you realize that your parent who you've probably gone through life thinking is superhuman if you don't let them know that you're not and if you don't emphasize the fact that it, it might go wrong here and there but we're in it together absolutely and one thing i i know i charge myself with is if i'm wrong or i didn't quite miss the mark make the mark i apologize because yeah. I don't want her to think, you know, like I always thought, like my parents were perfect, right? No yeah. one apologized. It's like we just kept going. We just made do. But I want her to know that, you know what? Parents don't always get it right. It's okay. There's a thousand books out there, but it may not be conducive for our situation. No. Those books are written based on the situation for that person. But it may not work for us. You know, parenting is not like some cookie cutter, like straight line. It's not. You know, we're going to have some bumps in the road. Relentlessly. I mean, look, you can't you can't get two adults that are attracted to each other on every level to run down a perfectly smooth path. There will be highs and lows and there'll be side turnings and there'll be every kind of hiccup drama, car crash, everything going on. So then the moment you're trying to recreate that healthy relationship with, with your creation, I could get very esoteric here because I, I, I do also think, and I've read about it recently, uh, Dr. Wayne Dwyer, Dyer was doing a talk about um, children and about the fact that they are souls that choose us. They are souls that choose their journey. And I subscribe to that enormously. I do sometimes wonder what the heck I was doing but we'll, that's a different day. Um, but, but my son, his, his energy, his persona, the, his, his special tags are just indescribably remarkable. And, and just to go on with Dr. Dyer's point, because it was, it was beautifully made. He had eight children and he was present at the birth of five of them and he was in the hospital for the first three. He's no longer with us and this was a long time ago. So it was difficult to even get in the floor of the hospital as a man, which is something I feel very strongly about. It's still, we're still in the dark ages when it comes to the, the male's role in, in the parenting, the delivery, the, the childcare afterwards. We, uh, in one way, we had a, a terrible time when our son was born, um, his mother and our son spent five solid days in ICU. The birth was very, very traumatic. There was a team around her within 17 minutes of entering the hospital. We only went in because something felt wrong. But that something that felt wrong was her body shutting down. She had um, a, a high level eclampsia um, attack for the pregnancy, and we nearly lost both of them. The, the point of the story is when we left, and, and we're, we're both mature, like quite older parents but when we left the hospital we did not have a scooby what we were doing we did not have a vaguest clue what we were doing forget the books the cookie cutter i mean literally it was like we didn't get the car seat right in the back of the car and we had five days in a hospital so we had teams of people around us and yeah, it was yeah. like oh, you need to do this and you need to do that and okay this is how you breastfeed no you're not doing it right and you've got to and you know all this stuff going on and like well, why are you doing that with the bottle? And why? And so we learned a lot of things because we were in the environment watching professionals do it. So I feel for anyone that like, here's your baby, off you go. And you're like, well, hang on a minute. Nine hours ago, I was in here. Now I'm going home again. And, you know, my body's all upside down. And there's a baby here that's crying and pooing. And I don't know which end I'm meant to take care of first. It's tough. You're absolutely right. And oh, my goodness, I figured... This can't be that difficult. <laughs> science. And I just remember, you're absolutely right. I, I, I swear, I think she trained herself on a lot of things. Yeah. Because even the car seat, I remember I turning the corner. Now, I wasn't going fast. I was probably going like 15 miles, but I'm not fast. And the next thing you know, the car seat flipped off the seat. And I'm like, oh, God, I killed her. And I <laughs> her. 
And she's like, huh, huh. And she was literally like, I don't know, like three or four months old. And it's like, at that point, I was like, I think she's going to be like a rocket scientist because she just got it. Like, and she's hanging upside down. I'm thinking like, oh my gosh, this should not be this difficult. But you're right. They, in, in the hospital, they, there's always someone there to instruct you. Yep. When you come home, it's like, oh my gosh. And it, I almost felt defeated. And I'm thinking, wait a minute. I have common sense. I believe in higher power. I'm pretty educated. Why couldn't I not strap a four pound kid in this car seat properly? I actually had to call the police. Okay. Tell me how to do it. Well, here, you know, that's probably not their job. No, I think, I think a fireman would have been a better move. Probably. Generally, generally they're more attractive and generally they're more familiar with moving car seats around. Yeah. I called the police and it was so funny because when they arrived, they were like, you know, could I ask, why'd you call us? I said, look, where I'm from, we call the police for everything. We probably should be calling other people, but we don't. So can you help me? And they did. And I was thinking, okay, that task is down. Here we go to something else. Yeah. And you're right. So now it's like, okay, juggling the whole work, having a demanding job and a kid. You know, and then it's like, well, and I was promoted on maternity leave. And I just remember saying to my boss, like, thanks, I guess. Yeah. I well, that, I'm no, sorry. But that's the other thing, isn't it? You go back into work and it's like, hang on a minute now. I just, I've really, really got to, I've got to get used to, I'm not doing a feed and I'm not sterilizing and I'm not cleaning up sick and I'm not washing for the 15th time today. Yeah. What, who, wants, who wants what? What email? Who? Which department? It, yes. Oh, boy. Yeah, it's almost like you need that that return to work phase. It almost needs to be phased in. But then again, the the expectations aren't there, are they? The expectations are right. Your maternity's over, love. Get back in here. We need you. By the way, we're going to promote you to tell you to tell you how much we need you. We're going to promote you. It's like no, please don't. Please yes. don't. Yes, and I was so funny because I'm telling my friends and family, I'm like. I got promoted and everyone's like, oh, you should be happy. I'm like, absolutely not. The timing couldn't be more worse. Like, no, I even said to my manager, like, wait a minute, you got to be kidding me. Are you serious? Like, I got promoted. I don't need any more responsibility. I'm trying to take care of this kid. I'm trying yeah. to take care of the house. I'm just trying to take care of me. I'm trying to shower. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and now... Because I've been, I was in healthcare, so now you want me to be responsible for thousands of people's lives when I can't be responsible for our lives. Like I'm still working serious? on a car seat. Leave me alone. Yeah, car seat. Yeah, I didn't even know you had to put the base in there. How about that? Yeah, I didn't have a like a guide because I'm an only child, so it's not like I had like you know some instructions. I literally was on the side of the road on many occasions, like googling. Because even like my parents said, when I was coming, you didn't need a car seat. You just put nope. the kids, you know. I, <laughs> I remember running around in the back of the car. I remember screaming at people to go faster if we went over a hump in the road. Yes. Not anymore. Yeah, not anymore. And it was so funny because my mother's like, we didn't need a car seat. And I'm thinking like, I remember we had like, um, like you call it bucket seats where you had the two seats in the little hump. Yep. The Sitting on that. Yep. You know, and now you want me to do a car seat and then on top of that, I have more responsibility. And then I'm thinking like, wait a minute. I have to I have more responsibility. I probably would have decreased my responsibilities. And then to add insult to injury, I decided to go back to school. And I was thinking like, am I an idiot? What was I thinking? I do hope you've improved your processes since then. Yeah, absolutely. And that's why I started helping other people like officially because I'm thinking like, you know, don't do what I did where you're in school, you're taking care of a home, you're taking care of a new kid. Because even like three months before she was born, we bought a house. So now on top of that, it's a different commute, yeah. it's a different neighborhood, it's a house, like everything. So I tell people like, I'm strongly advising, do not do what I did. I can't even tell you how I got it done. I just did it. 
but I would not recommend that to anyone. Unfortunately, unfortunately, it's and and I'm in a similar position because I I advise people around business, and I have to say the vast majority of my advice is based on what I did wrong. Yes. It's not, you know what what I did right, I couldn't tell you about it. When it was going right, I wasn't paying attention, I wasn't measuring it. But by God, the screw ups, I can give you chapter and verse on those. I can tell you where they came from, how they happened. And and like you say, and, and again, I, I use this point in business and in life, minimalize your failure points. So, you know, don't have a baby, get promoted, move house, change locations. Yeah. You know, please just one. You can have one. You can get promoted or you can have a baby. Don't even add anything more to the list. Yes. And for me, I felt like I had to prove myself to myself. Yes. yes. And I'm like, why am I proving me to myself? Why? In my mind, I was thinking with the house thing, I'm like, okay, um, I had had a nice yard growing up. We had a house. So I want my daughter to have a, a yard and a house. She didn't care about that. You know? No interest. Yeah. No I, interest. Yeah. And so I'm thinking, okay, I want this for my daughter. But then even when we moved, I'm thinking, oh, my gosh, because her father at the time, he worked like an hour and a half away. So I'm thinking, you know what? I'm going to start some projects on top of that. We need new doors. We need this. And I remember clearly one of my friends saying, who cares about the doors? Who care about all that other stuff? No one's going to come and see that you have painted doors or whatever versus not. Like, they don't even care about you anymore. You're not the focus point anymore. But no. yes, you're absolutely right. I never thought about it that way. It's good that you can explain things to people because this is like what not to do. Exactly. exactly. Yes. And you're right. Success is you can't explain that. You're like, I don't even know how I did it. <laughs> but those failures, you can. Oh, chapter and verse, chapter and verse. The successes, are, you know, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm giving comedy to it. The successes, yeah. I can tell you what to do, but do you know what? The successes are the same for everyone. They're not hard. They're fundamentals. But it, the the screw ups, they're the little things that you just build on. So, you know, and you were building on them, like you say. So you moved. You'd got a better yard, but then you decided that not only did your your husband partner at the time you've now given him 90 minutes each way. So that's, that's three hours of his days gone in travel. But then when he gets home, you're asking him to be a builder or a remodeler. Yeah. And, it, you know, it, that's that's without what you're doing to yourself. Because I know that you weren't stood still thinking, right, now I'll just paint my nails. Yeah. I know full well that you were driving yourself mad either with your schooling, yeah. your career or your parenting. So between the two of you, you were absolutely driving yourself into a corner. Like you say, thank goodness you've had that experience. I don't, I hope you stop as many people as possible from that lunacy. Yes, it was. It was like, I tell them, like, look, make sure you don't repeat this. See, the good thing is now you have a playbook of what not to do. Please take my advice. Don't do it because you will go crazy. And I wanted to make sure the house is clean just in case anyone came over. And I want everything had to be perfect. And she had to be dressed and she had to have this big stupid dresses on and all this other stuff. And I'm like, it wasn't even important. It no. was not important. You're right. I put the extra stress on. And then I realized at that point when she was probably about one and a half, I said, you know what? I don't need to move up the ladder in a, a career. For what? I'm okay being right here. As long as I'm responsible, I can pay the bills. I am okay. I don't need the added stress. It's not worth it. And then also in between there, I missed a lot of firsts, right? Because now okay. going back to work, you missed, oh yeah, your daughter took a first step. Oh yeah, you missed this, you missed it. I'm like, you know what? I'm not missing any of that. I don't care if it's something big or small. I don't want to miss it because I don't want you telling me like I want to be the one that's, you know, that's sharing that with you. Like, oh, yeah, this is what we did. We experienced. I want to be that one. So for me, I'm like, nah, I'm OK. But it, that, that and again, that's social pressure. And it's that it's that evil self-talk where yeah. you've missed the first. Would well, you know what? 
don't worry about missing a first make sure you're there for the next one and also make sure you're there be present and and it's 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 talked about but i still think it's massively underrated if you're in the room and you're not present you might as well not be there so if you're watching them playing their first game if you're watching them playing their first concert doing their first school play whatever it might be if you're in the room and looking at your phone it's best you didn't turn up because you're not representing very well you're sitting there looking at your phone instead of looking at your child and you you don't even know you're doing it it's habit it's pressure it's anything and i i don't think for one second anyone wakes up in the morning and goes how can i be a shit dad <laughs> yeah yeah but, but guess what if you're not properly there then you are being a shit dad because they need you they need to know you're there they'll vibe your energy they'll vibe your vibe your presence and and if that means you're not there for the i mean i've missed my son's um first school sports day part of it was covid part of it was work i i took a view on it there were I, again there were things in the equation mm -hmm. that i could not change and so my non-negotiables were were layered and i said is this a non-negotiable that i've got to fight for and i must do or is it something that is is manageable he never ever once mentioned you weren't there i did this it's never been a reference point it's never been spoken about i don't other than bringing it up now as a reference point for us mm -hmm. it's not something that i carry around on one of my bits of baggage that i pull out and crucify myself over but it's it's a reality and and i think again if you if you get your comforts right about what you're going to be doing and when you're turning up that's more important than than haranguing yourself and beating yourself up because you missed their first word or their first step yeah they need you all through life and i my my father passed 22 years ago but he was still in my life and still I'd, I'd turn up in a Porsche and I'd, I'd be doing very, very well in life. And he'd still look at me and go, are you okay for money? Do you want some cash? Do you want to grab a sandwich or take... It, it's like, Dad, it, which bit of this is confusing you? The car, the houses, the clothes? Which, where, where where do you think I need your money, darling? I've just come to see you and, and hang with you for a minute. I don't need a penny. But the, the parental mode was always, are you okay? Can I do anything for you? It doesn't yeah. go away. You're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. And you're right. I've never looked at it that way where don't worry about the first that you missed. You know, just going forward, it's almost like that. Um, it it kind of like bothered me, you know. It For will me, do. Yeah. It bothered me. And I'm like, I can't do this. Anymore. Now, I felt like once I realized that, that I was going in overdrive not to miss anything. So now I've added an extra layer of stress that I did not need to add. And you see it, you see it in you see it in rom coms. I mean, they 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 deliver this little scenario very well in rom coms. And you see them, you know, they they they're driving through car crashes and they're climbing mountains and swinging across the tops of buildings to get to the school play. And one parent's coming from one direction, the other parents come from the other. They both get there and they both look like they're about to explode. You're not helping. You're not adding to the value of that child's experience. You're not adding to the value of your own experience of that moment. You're better off not being there. You're right. And you brought up a good point because I remember she was playing soccer and even track a couple of times. And she's like, did you see me, you know, make a goal? Did you see me um, running? And I'm like, yeah. And then I'm thinking like, oh, shoot, I completely missed it. So even me being on a laptop and working, thinking, okay, you know, I'm trying to keep our lights on, but her, it didn't matter. I could give her the world. She did not care. It's the moment. Yep. And trust me when I tell you, I said, you know what? I don't want to miss those moments. They don't care that you can give them money. They don't care about that. You know, they care. Okay. Did you see me? When I looked out there, I should have been locking eyes with you, but you missed it. You know, and to me, that was gut wrenching. And I'm like, you know what? Yeah, that that kind of bothered me. But you learn from it. Yes. You know, if, if it's a perpetual repeat, then 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 you have issues. Um,
but you know that that emotional pain that you've still got there now that that keeps you clear and present every time every opportunity um and it's tough you know our, our learning process through our children is so tough yeah and i try and that's that's one maybe that's that's the core to this conversation is that you try and take away as many pain points as possible with that that process of non-negotiable with that process of being present mm -hmm. of actually genuinely being there um before and i i had a i had a long time of being judgmental about parenting because i didn't have any children because i hadn't been married and and we used to talk about mcdonald's dads dads that only had their kids every other weekend and took them to mcdonald's and the, the sadness was that even when they went to McDonald's, the dads would be sitting there looking at their phones. Mm -hmm. Buddy, why are you even bothering? That is, that is your worst moment, is when you're consistently doing it. Yeah. Then, then you're, not, you know, you're, you're, not, you're not helping. Um, and I've, I've got horror stories from friends where their parents split up. And, and these are guys my age, and I can still see the emotional scarring on them because of the way that that process went through and affected them so if you're you know if if you're turning up and you're giving your heart and you're giving all into each and every moment that you're with your daughter that any of us are with our children even you know married couples or separated it's still the same you know you weren't the only mum there that was looking at a computer screen or a phone or wasn't totally on on the page and in the room it's common yes and that's the sadness yes you're absolutely right you're absolutely right so what do you recommend for people who feel like they're at that crossroad where they have to choose well i'm not going to say have but sometimes you know employees will put you in a situation where they now you're forced to choose or you're not a team player i mean there's so many things so yep. this goes on what would you recommend for someone who is in that crossroad where you they feel like they have to make a decision you tony robbins talks a lot about being um drawn to pleasure but pushed away from pain and the fact is that we work better for some reason most of us work better when we're when we're escaping pain so when these things are mounting and what you're describing there is is an escalation process where work is coming at you more where 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 school trips where your child's attention all these things are escalating and you can feel them pulling and pulling harder and harder on you and you're going in two directions that that is a time when you really need to stop very very hard and fast and i know it's an old cliche but the, you know old cliches exist for a very good reason get out a bit of paper get the pros and cons down on a bit of paper what's the stuff that matters what's the stuff that's burning you what's the stuff that's not burning you? where 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 are the where are the pain points is it just work or is it work and is it just your home life is it your relationship within the home it, you know it, it's so many different things but if you can clearly identify the bigger picture which is a blank bit of paper and some time and it will take a couple of nights sleep and let your subconscious mind work through with you and let the energy let your let your higher self guide you then you will pick up and it could be in the scenario you've just described it could be as simple as you know what that job's not for me anymore i'm done with that environment right and, and you can make the decision to change jobs and the irony is again with your higher self and with your energy in making that decision the job can turn itself upside down and inside out to fit you because suddenly the reason why they were putting on you is they need you the reason why they were putting on you is because they love and want you the reason why they were putting on you is because you are an absolute essential piece in the machinery now they will facilitate your needs but mm -hmm. until you express those needs clearly and to the point where they're non-negotiable you know what you can't do that i can't do your job yeah it's a non-negotiable, but it's a non-negotiable that you have practically resolved and you understand that in that being a non-negotiable, your new scenario is, I'm going for a job that's nearer home. I'm going for a job that's 10% less pay, 
but it's 15% less expensive because right. I'm not, here's the funny thing. I'm not spending money on childcare. I'm spending less money on commuting. I'm spending less money on food. There's mm -hmm. so many nuances to this. And we are aware of them today because people work from home more because there's more of a flexible lifestyle. But these yeah. things start to pay attention. And you start to look at, well, hang on a minute. What's it worth? For, I mean, for me, it's an enormous sum of money. If I can work in a way that allows me to drop my son at school or to pick him up from school or to have an extra night a week with him, that is almost an immeasurable value. Right. And if, if you put that on a table for me, I'm yours. I'll, I'll do things for you never thought possible because it's it's a key point. So when it's that's the positive. So when the negative, the scenario you describe, when that's coming at you, you you really really need to take stock. You've got to stop. Do not let it escalate. Do not let it get to the point where the child has rolled across the back of the car because you don't know how to do the car seat, and you're phoning the police on the side of the road. Then it's late. Do it before then. Settle down and get get on Google, get on LinkedIn, mm -hmm. talk to friends. I mean, I I can't tell you how how massively changing, and and I don't mean oh my god, my hair's turned blonde and I've become twenty years younger and beautiful. Uh -huh. but meditation has given me insights. Meditation has given me balance, um, and I don't do it every single day. There are days I miss it. There are days when I get it wrong. There are days when it doesn't. It doesn't resonate with me. But overall, it's a massive, massive benefit to the decision-making processes that matter. That that balancing out. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. I mean, you definitely gave us some things to think about, like even for me, you know, um, that it's all right to say no. You know, don't miss, don't beat yourself up about it. You know, you missed it maybe once, maybe twice, fine, let it go move on to something else because there's always going to be some first even with children there's always going to be some first she's only 14 you've got a string of them yet a <laughs> string of them yeah we're into that teenage years now so you know. <laughs> i'm laughing because i know it's coming and i i'm sure i won't be laughing for the six or so years we're in the middle of it but um yeah, yeah. wow yeah, the teenagers, they know everything. They don't want to be seen with you. I mean, it's just a plethora of things. Absolutely. Yeah. So is there anything else you want to leave us with? Because you've dropped so many jewels today. I really appreciate it. Even like I said, gave me something to think about. You're very kind. You're very kind. I. And again, this is only from, from recent reading and, and, and from trying to develop myself as much as I can. Um, there, there are a couple of people that I think are phenomenal. And, and again, they will help you. Uh, Naval Ravikant wrote a book, Love Yourself Like Your Life Depends Upon It. Mm -hmm. Massive, massive shift. And he was one of the key points. I'd been trying to meditate for two or three years. And trying, I think Yoda absolutely nailed trying. Yes. Try, you must, try you must not. Do you must. So you don't, you don't try, you do. Um, but Naval Ravikant, in in the book, he talked about meditation. He said, "Listen, if you just if you just try and do it, and in trying, you're doing it. You might not think you're doing it, but if you stop for a minute and you just calm yourself and focus, you've done a meditation. As you get better, you'll do it for longer." Um, so there's two two stories in there: the meditation, but the love. If you you need to find the love for yourself, because that will stop you from crucifying yourself over the the first sports day, uh, the first play, the first whatever it might be, and all of them that are in front of us. Some of them we'll get to, some of them we won't. But if you work from love, love yourself, love your decisions. You're absolutely right. I mean, I couldn't have said it even better. You're absolutely right. And the other thing is, go old school, do the pros and cons, write them down. And plus, yep. too, for me, that that's helpful because if I write it down now, it holds me to be accountable. Exactly. Exactly. You know, I don't have it like in my mind. And I, it's right there. It's tangible. I have to be accountable and I have to do it because I have to look at it. Yes. Yeah. It triggers your integrity. 
it does trigger your integrity. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, I want to say thank you so very much for coming on. As I thought, it was an absolute pleasure having you. Thank you. Thank you so much for even responding. I appreciate it. Dropping the jewels for everyone. I hope everyone got something out of it, as I know I have. Uh, thank you. I'm very grateful. Thank you. And with that, everyone, please make sure um, that you subscribe and follow. Do you have, um, I have all your information. So just to let you know, it's going to be posted for everyone. You know, whatever you have given me, it's going to be posted so they can find you as well. Is there anything, um, like it could be social media or whatever that you would like um, to kind of put out there and share beforehand? Um, thank you, Lamar. I'm I'm quite active on Facebook. I exist on YouTube and LinkedIn. Facebook, I'm I'm very open to. If anyone's got a question, if anyone's like, how the hell do I deal with this? <laughs> yeah. If if I don't know the answer, I might know where there's a book that's likely to have the answer. Um, but I I appreciate anyone that that asks for help. I I will give everything I can to help. Um, and I've had an absolute joy chatting with you today. Thank you. It's been a blast. Absolutely. Absolutely. So without that, everyone, we are going to say see you later. And thank you again for joining us. Thank you. You've been listening to The Truth of the Matter with Dr. Spencer. Yes, we talk about taboo topics, but that's life. And we keep it real and raw. And we keep it real and raw. Our passion is to educate and enlighten. We hope you've enjoyed the show. If you did, make sure to like, rate, and review the show. And we'll be back soon. But if you have a unique relationship situation and you'd like help, or you're tired of having to choose between your career and personal life, Dr. Lamar Renee Spencer is a life alignment strategist and a certified life, relationship, and business coach. So make sure to reach out on Instagram and TikTok at Dr. Lamar Spencer, on Twitter at Dr. Spencer 15, on Facebook at Dr. Lamar Renee Spencer, and the website DrLamarSpencer.com. Or go old school and call 973-214-6464. Don't forget to purchase the book, The Depth and Diversity with Relationships. Find it on Amazon and the website. See you next time on The Truth of the Matter.